Kelsey Brennan Wessels and welcome to this special edition of Earth from Space on the European Space Agency Web TV. With me today is Pierre Poutin, who is the mission manager for the Sentinel 1 mission. Now, Sentinel 1 is a two satellite mission. The first satellite, what we call Sentinel 1A, was launched two years ago in April of 2014. And coming up, we have the launch of the second satellite, Sentinel 1B. Can you begin by telling me what is the benefit of having two satellites in orbit basically doing exactly the same thing? Yes, indeed, Sentinel-1B is a copy of the satellite Sentinel-1A that was launched uh, two years ago. Uh, indeed, the Sentinel-1 mission was conceived based on the constellation of two satellites at the same time in orbit. And this is uh, necessary in particular to uh, fulfill the needs of some Copernicus uh, services in terms of uh, coverage and revisit frequency. So we can say indeed that the two satellites will be exploited in a very similar way. Okay, can you be a bit more specific on how, um, what sort of applications would benefit from such a frequent revisit time with two satellites? Yes, actually most applications will benefit from this uh, two satellite constellation, starting with the key applications uh, dealing with the um, maritime environment uh, monitoring service for uh, sea ice and uh, iceberg monitoring aspects. This is a Copernicus service, and actually this service uh, has the need to uh, get, uh, for some key areas, a daily mapping of uh, with Sentinel-1 data. And this is possible only with two satellites in orbit. Then there are other applications, like uh, maritime surveillance applications, uh, including oil speed detection and tracking, for which uh, a, a revisit, a more frequent revisits, will also be a, a great added value. We have also a series of applications uh, related to, to land cover, land use, like agriculture monitoring, soil moisture, and so on. Also there, this uh, constellation will bring uh, quite a nice added value. And I should not forget the interferometry applications. It will be possible to do uh, interferometry across Sentinel 1A and 1B, and this will, be a, will give the possibility to do interferometry every six days instead of 12 days with one satellite. As you know, this technique of interferometry allows to uh, detect ground motion in a very, very accurate way. And this will open new opportunities for applications like uh, subsidence monitoring or um, tracking a fast velocity glacier in a remote area like in uh, Antarctica or applications related to landslide monitoring, for instance. Okay. Now, of course, the first unit, Sentinel-1A, has already been in orbit for two years. What sort of results have we seen from the first unit? We got great results with Sentinel-1A, and uh, I can mention a few. So first, this uh, Copernicus Marine Environment Monitoring Service is making use of Sentinel-1 data since the end of the commissioning phase, September 2014, in an operational way. So this is already a major achievement with the mission. Then, uh, in the area of uh, disaster management, uh, typically large floods, Sentinel-1 is very uh, suitable to that as well. And uh, the satellite responding to a number of uh, activations from the Copernicus Emergency Management Service, as well as from the Atlas Charger Space and Major Disasters, for in particular large scale floods. Then we had a number of uh, applications related to understanding the ground motion induced by uh, major earthquakes. This was the case with these earthquakes that uh, took place in 2014 in, uh, in California in the Napa Valley, and last year in uh, Nepal, in Chile, in Afghanistan, more recently in Greece, in Nefkada, as well as in, in Taiwan. Also there, with the technique of uh, interferometry, it was possible to characterize the ground motion induced by these uh, major earthquakes. I should also mention some uh, examples linked to uh, agriculture monitoring. We have great results related to the mapping of uh, rice field in Asia, in particular. And uh, I can also mention a last example uh, related to uh, the first maps of uh, uh, glacier velocity over the big ice sheets that are Greenland and Antarctica. This allows to characterize the speed of these glaciers and allows the scientists to better understand, assess the contribution of these uh, huge glaciers to the global sea level rise due to uh, climate change. 
Now, what are the challenges linked to the setup and operations of a two satellite mission like Sentinel-1? Well, building uh, high performance satellites as well as building the corresponding uh, ground system command control facilities is already a major challenge. Then there is the other part of the uh, ground segment which is dealing with the management of the data and considering the huge amount of uh, data that the satellites are generated, it was a major challenge to set up the ground system facilities related to uh, planning the SAR, acquiring all this data, processing, having a routine quality control, archiving this data and also distributing to this data to the world. Because indeed this is another challenge. One thing is to manage all this data and generate this data. And something else is to make available this product worldwide to the users. And this is in the framework of the Copernicus Sentinel uh, free and open data policy. To give you a couple of figures, today with one satellite, we generate already one three terabyte of uh, data per day. And we have made available online about half of million products uh, that are accessible freely to all users. And about how many people are using these data and how do they get it? So today we have uh, set up a number of um, so-called data hub, which are accessible to, to everybody. The, the, the way to access data is very simple, with a simple registration. We have uh, today registered about 30,000 users who are making use of uh, Sentinel data. And, uh, and we can see that uh, the volume of data that has been downloaded is a very good indicator on the success of the mission. Actually, more than 4 million products were downloaded by users. This represents roughly uh, 5 petabytes of data. This is the order of magnitude. And we can consider that today already, uh, with one satellite in orbit, after two years of operations, uh, we have a, a successful mission. Okay, well, Pierre, thank you so much for joining us today, and best of luck with the launch of Sentinel-1B. And to our viewers, remember that to learn more about the Sentinel-1 mission, you can visit our website at www.esa.int/sentinel1.